Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy. So today uh, we're going to do a little bit, I suppose, in terms of promotion of the professional dairy farmers, um, da- dairy farm management diploma that Emma Louise is looking after. Uh, and we've also brought on Brendan Ryan, who's a former graduate of that course, to talk about his experience of it. But I, I would say that Brendan has probably some interesting information to share with, with people as a whole, whether they in, take on to go, doing the course or not, or whether you're farming a long number of years, just in terms of the network of people that he's put around him, uh, in terms of making the decisions that he's made, um, progressing to being a dairy farmer himself now again. Uh, and I let him talk through his own career, obviously, in a minute. But uh, first, we're going to just share a screen here with, of some slides um, and Emma Louise is going to talk through the kind of the background of the course. Uh, and then, as I said, we'll get stuck into to, to Brendan then in terms of what he's um, doing now and where, how he's gotten to this point. So I'll hand over to you. So Emma Louise, and thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks, um, Stuart. Um, yeah, so um, today we have the opportunity to discuss the Level 7 Professional Diploma in Dairy Farm Management. And essentially it is the, the Dairy Farm Management course that Chagas deliver. I suppose, firstly, if we get into some of the course information, um, you know, briefly, this is the gold standard in training for anyone who is interested in pursuing um, a career in dairy farm management in Ireland. And I guess for any of the more seasoned uh, listeners uh, today, uh, people who have logged on, it is the equivalent of the old uh, Farm Apprenticeship Board or the old FAB um, that ran for many years in Ireland. Um, I suppose there is an, an entry requirement for this program, and that is a level six advanced certificate in agriculture or an equivalent. And I guess the level six can be obtained in any of the six um, ag colleges in Ireland, uh, and those are Kildalton, Ballyhays, Clonakilty, uh, Mount Bellew, uh, Gertine, and Palace Kenry. Um, and when we say that level six or equivalent, um, you know, each year we do have one or two applicants who have completed a level seven or level eight in one of the ITs or universities in Ireland. And if if we think about the course, it is it's really um, pushing people forward into farm management and farm business ownership. And that could be somebody who intends uh, on returning home uh, to a dairy farm in the long or short term but also then people who are looking, um, you know, maybe from a non-farming background and looking to uh, take up a role as a farm manager or or farm business owner in the form of a leased farm, um, some form of a partnership or share farming arrangements. Um, And I guess, you know, when we think about the, you know, the outcome, looking uh, to graduates like Brendan, um, who, you know, you'd often meet at, at open days or farm events, you know, they talk about the huge job satisfaction that they have. Um, there's autonomy and responsibility within roles as managers or business owners. And also financially, it, it can be really rewarding for people, um, you know, who are working with uh, working on dairy farms. I suppose specifically then to the course, it is a two year course where students are working on farm full time um, and they would work with registered uh, host farmers in Ireland. Um, as you are working full time, you are entitled to um, annual leave. So there are 20 days paid annual leave uh, dot, you know, throughout the year. And then there are also um, 20 college days. And I suppose, you know, in terms of the certification and awarding of this course, uh, Chagas is linked uh, to UCD um, and UCD are the awarding body of the of the degree. Um, so looking then, I suppose, specifically, you are uh, on placement full time. So if, if we look at the course format and we'll move on to the next slide, Stuart, thank you. Um, you know, I suppose there are two options and and primarily, you know, um, people will go for option one. So we will focus on that to start with. But in year one, um, students will start on their placement farm in the month of September and they will be working there right through until August. Um, at which time then they're placed on a second farm. And again, they will start on farm in September and they will work on that farm through to August. I suppose a typical roster that uh, students tend to work. If you asked me three years ago, I would say 90% plus of students would have worked an 11-3 roster. So that's 11 days on and three days off. So every second weekend you'd have, um, I suppose, an extended extended, um, break period. 
um, you know, in recent years, that is shifting uh, towards 5-2. Uh, so five days on, two days off. Um, and that's not necessarily, you know, every Saturday and Sunday. It might be that your two days off are a Sunday, Monday or something like that. But it is, um, you know, that I suppose rosters are changing on dairy farms to, to um, that type of thing. And, you know, I mentioned it is paid. So uh, students will get paid for every hour they work. And the minimum requirement we set is that host farmers would pay students at least minimum wage. And we would see a lot of contracts that come back to us uh, between the host and students. They are getting that 11, 12 euro an hour. So that's the sort of, of pay that you're, you're looking at. I suppose just in terms of the where our host farmers are located, um, you know, we have a map here and we can see that we have host farmers dotted throughout the country. So for, you know, for anyone who is interested in applying, it, it does give you the opportunity to travel away from home, maybe to a different county to live away from home and, and gain some independence. But at the same time, it, it's important to point out a lot of people do like to stay within, you know, 30 minutes of home for placement. And that can also uh, be facilitated depending on the, the um, I suppose, the, the requirements of the, the student. Um, there is an opportunity to travel abroad as part of this placement. And this comes under, say, your option two. Um, so for somebody who would like to travel abroad, there is a defined six month period within um, the course time um, that students take that opportunity. So you would start a standard on farm in September and you would finish slightly earlier in the month of June, at which time you would travel abroad. So that six month period falls from July until December. Um, and then you will return to Ireland and start your second Irish placement at the later stage of January. And then again, a standard you would finish um, in August time. In terms of where people would travel overseas, New Zealand is incredibly popular. Uh, a lot of people would take the opportunity to travel there. And that, you know, with that, you get an opportunity to do your um, additional calving and breeding season um you know at, i suppose the other the other end of the world um but also people have traveled to scotland uh, germany and uh, missouri in the us and australia in recent times um i guess then if we think about it there is an education element uh, so we have course days and if we move on and we look at um i suppose what's included in that there are 20 college days on average um each year and um I suppose the main aim is to build and grow capabilities. Um, if we think about somebody who has completed the level six, um, you know, they have completed a lot of um, lectures, practicals and on-farm placement. Um, so there's a huge um, base in terms of technical knowledge and skills. So what we're really looking to do is build upon those and, and strengthen them and implement that knowledge um, on, a far on farms day to day. Um, I suppose outside of that, um, you know, we would place a large emphasis on things like financials. So to really understand how your management decisions um, impact on the bottom line and are there small tweaks that you can make to increase profit. Um, we would also place an emphasis on people. And I think, you know, regardless of whether you're managing 50 cows or 200 cows, there are a huge amount of people involved in businesses and you know it can be a relief milker um you know a full-time staff member but it's also then the people that you're engaging with maybe on a daily weekly monthly basis like the the lorry driver who collects your milk your feed merchant your advisor your accountant your vet these are all really really important people to your business and are you working and communicating with them um effectively to you know for the the good of the business and then finally, I suppose that the, the final key point and, and, and focus area is sustainability. And it's a buzzword that, you know, we're possibly all sick of hearing about. But really, you know, the spotlight is on agriculture in terms of sustainability and particularly dairy. So do we fully understand all of the practices that we need to engage with in order to, um, you know, to make sure that we are farming to the best of our ability from that perspective? And I suppose because it is a dairy management course, we're also looking at management capabilities that um, that we need and that we have in order to, um, you know, in order to make sure that 
we are managing most effectively. Um, so they're the type of things that we'll focus on in course days and looking at the delivery then, you know, your, you know, the people who are providing um, this content would be Chagas researchers, uh, specialists, um, some of the lecturers from the ag colleges and advisors. So it's a it's a huge team effort within Chagas and there, you know, there's a huge amount of people involved. And we also see sometimes we do in, um, engage with external people like the banks, ICBF, um, you know, different uh, industry partners like that. And, you know, there are some similarities between, um, I suppose, how you'd learn in the level six. And here we do have lectures and practicals, but we also get out and there's a strong focus on course days spent um, in a discussion group format. And then finally, I suppose the location of the course days is typically Chagas Moor Park and Kildalton College. And we'd also engage with, with the other uh, ag colleges uh, from time to time. So I guess that's a whistle stop tour of, of um, what the course entails. So we might talk to you, Brendan, uh, and just get some information. You might start by telling us, um, you know, how you developed an interest in pursuing a career in dairy farming. Yeah, so um, thanks, uh, Louise. Um, so I've been farming at home with my parents um, from an early age, um, trained to milk cows since maybe 13, 14 years old. Um, did my leaving cert in 2013, and where I then went to uh, study level five in Palace Kenry. Um, then did the level six in Palace Kenry, I went to placement in New Zealand. Um, I got four months in the North Island um, on a 600 cow farm and then two months in the South Island on a 2,300 cow farm. Um, both big time opened up my eyes um, in terms of uh, time management, people management um, and the scale of farming, obviously, which didn't really see in here in Ireland. Um, I then went on to... Uh, do the professional diploma in dairy farm management. So I started with Eddie and Dennis O'Donnell in um, in Golden on the first year. Um, I suppose the main tasks would be milking cows, um, doing your grass walks, uh, drafting cows for AI, um, a bit of tractor work and machinery work like spreading fertilizer, a bit of slurry. Um, I suppose going through assessing opportunities, um, discussing goals, um, Went on then to Coleman Dealey in Newcastle West, my second year placement. Um, uh, Coleman then had, I had a run of the, the farm for Coleman. Um, furthered my skills in grass management. Um, did the AI course. Um, I suppose marked out the cows that I AI then and was able to go back the three weeks afterwards. Looked at what I AI was able to compare um, and was very happy with that. It gave me confidence then going forward for doing DIY AI at home then in the future. Um, I suppose the, the best thing about the course, like for them two years is like, uh, you're working with the best farmers. Um, they're, they're trying to get you to where you want to be, discussing your goals. Like, I mean, with Eddie over assessing opportunities is the big thing. Um, obviously Eddie is on multiple farms um, and going, going uh, at the, in our, Putting into practice what I had learned on them farms, I was able to improve profitability at home. Um, and then being, a, being able to assess opportunities, I've now um, taken on a, a new farm, a second junior, so I'm now milking on a, a second junior myself. So I suppose um, after, uh, after the two years in, with the diploma course, I, um, I managed a farm for Martin Stapleton in Ula for two years. Um, Martin wasn't full time, they are full time on the farm, but was beside me with, if I any problems or whatever. So that was a great dip into management. Um, it was a 200 cow farm and it was very well set up. Um, and also it was in the drought as well, which was a big, massive learning curve, uh, which was, yeah, was tough, tough year. Um, so after that then, um, I moved to uh, Palace Kenry, the Ag College in Palace Kenry. Um, and took on the, the management role there for, I was there for 20, 20 months. I had intended on being there for a couple of years. Um, we always, I always had a plan to come home farming, but it wasn't actually, I hadn't planned really to come home for a couple of years. The opportunity came up a bit early, but 
I mean, the plan was already made, so I was able to adapt to that. And uh, I couldn't turn down the, the good opportunity. Um, I suppose all the way up through, I suppose I started, I was starting smaller. And every year then, I was obviously learning more grass, uh, financials, and then dipped into people management then with on Martin Stapleton's farm, managing a full-time relief milker, um, where I was able to put that into perspective then in Palace Henry with obviously dealing with a, it was at a, big, a bigger scale and obviously with, with um, more people. More staff, yeah. Brendan, do you mind if I, I take you back, right? Um, <clears throat> so like there's a lot of people now doing their level five or their level six at the moment. And I suppose what I'd like to ask you is, um, obviously, from what you said, the trip to New Zealand was something that was kind of a seminal moment, we'll say, for you in one sense as well, in terms of going on further. But there are people now that are finishing maybe level fives and level, or they're finishing level sixes, we'll say, they'll have to have level six done to go to Emma Louise next. Like, like why not? Why, why go do this, we'll say, in, in your opinion, we'll say, rather than just going, like, there's probably people there that could get jobs on farm straight away. Uh, if they want to, but what's what's your thinking in terms of like from from my perspective, from Emma Louise's perspective, we're going to say, yeah, this is a good thing to do. Even if you're going home farm in your own farm, you should go and do this. It's going to open your eyes. But from your perspective, like why did you make that decision? You were one of the earlier candidates, I suppose, to actually go into that program. That time it would have, you'd have been in the very first few years of it. Like, so what was the, what was the the deciding factor for you that I I need to do this if I want to go where I want to go kind of? Well, it was uh, first of all it was my love for farming, but it was also I wanted to further my education. Um, but also like with the level five and level six in Palace Henry, it's a great start up starting placements on on farms. Um, like your then you're implementing your. You're obviously your grass. And then when you go to the, the diploma course, the step up, you're doing it on a farm level, farm basis level. And you're actually, you're seeing that you're actually, you're actually, you're working with farmers that are going to allow you to make your own mistakes. And I suppose then learn from your mistakes. With in, in terms of the theory side and all that was covered um, in Palace Can you in that you're on farm for these two years and it's, it's a lot easier to learn, I suppose. Would you have found it? Left everyone. Yeah, the way you said it there, now the step up, would, like, is, is it like going from first division into Premier League? Like, did you notice that it was like, there was a big change? Oh, there was a big change, but like, obviously, with Eddie there, the, the first year um, placement, we would have went through like, what my, what level of, I suppose, um, was I able to take on, I suppose, responsibility in that and what, had I done before in terms of uh, grassland, what did I need to learn on? The key areas. And from there, then we worked on. And then, obviously, throughout the year, then whatever, uh, got better, got better at, well, I hope I, uh, Everton, got better at Everton. But then went to Coleman's farm in the second year and uh, furthered it again. Like So you're just getting better the whole time and it's happening on farm and you're seeing, you're making informed decisions on farm, I suppose. Do you know and what obviously- I mean? Obviously, Eddie's a farmer, grassland farmer, the year competition winner. Like, so from, from what you're saying there, so is you sat down, you said, right, these are my capabilities. And he said, right, you do this, 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 and this. And if you had an issue, you went back to him and you said, I'm, I'm not sure if I've done this right. And he looked over it and or he gave you his insight into what decision he'd make, kind of. And that helped you, uh, I suppose, hone your own skills then, in particular, I suppose, in relation to the grassland management. But just the general things, you were brought up bit by bit, you weren't just throwing a hospital pass and the tackle was coming for you oh, and that yeah. was it, like... Oh, God, no, no, like, um, so the main, the main responsibility I had was on the, the second uh, uh, out farm, milking, like, grass measuring there, uh, drafting cows for AI, all the day-to-day running on that farm. So, like, I was over there and I go and meet Eddie Din. We go through everything, what's working, what's not working. Oh, I dropped the cover too too low this week. I dropped put it too high this week. I have too much grass, I have too little. What did I make a mistake? Where what should I do the next time to, to so that doesn't happen again? And from there on then, like you know, just just it falls into place, then you get you get to know the farm then and you also get to know to, how to make better management decisions. Okay, very good. And then we'll say moving on, um, Obviously, as you said, you went, you did the AI course at, at Coleman's, then you went to Martin, then after that. So obviously Martin was involved with the I, IFA and, as you said, wasn't around a lot, but would still have 
a very good knowledge of what was to, what needed to be done on the farm. But was, was that another big step in terms of that you had a lot of control there? And as you said, you were managing the, the, the relief milker situation and maybe ringing for the feed and ringing for fertilizer, maybe potentially as well, I presume. Um, but yeah, it was, was a big, that, was big, that something that you, you, you liked actually like, then like to get that, that extra control, we'll say? Yeah, I suppose I got the extra, I suppose moving from Coleman's, I had great, excellent responsibility there at Coleman's, the running of the, of the farm, 120 cows, and then moving to Martin's, and then it was obviously it was a step, another step up. Um, it was a, bu- a busier, I suppose, it was myself and then the relief milk or whatever, but it, it was, I suppose, Martin wasn't there as much, I suppose, and it was it was a dip into management, I suppose, more more up, up again. It was another move up again, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. And then I suppose uh, it, it was a big move with the parlour taking place and everything in Palace Henry as well. Um, and were yeah, you involved yeah. in that or was there... Yeah, a- yeah, so the, um, when I moved into Palace Henry in, um, at the, the autumn of the year, um, which I saw undergo um, big expansion. So it would have been, that year would have milked uh, 260 cows and uh, the following spring, would have calved down 400, uh, 415 actually. And uh, so the start of the new cubicle shed was the month that I started, uh, 250 cubicles. And then obviously the year after, we had planned earlier to start the new rotary milk parlor, but COVID got in the way. So that was delayed a bit. But yeah, we got that um, up and running then and I was able to um, enjoy that for a few months before I left. So that would have been, for, I suppose, with the delay with the with parlor, obviously there was kind of a, a good bit of communication and kind of handling the, the lads that were milking as well as milking yourself, because obviously you were under a bit of pressure in terms of the scale of or the numbers that had to go through the original parlor that was there. Yeah, so it was um it was a twelve aside double up parlor, so there was there was a lot of rows going through it. Um, uh, yeah, um, I suppose the plan of plan there. Um, I said when Derek would have sat down, like the plan going forward was kind of three full time labor units, myself and two two lads, and uh, but like we had to adapt to the no, no, numerous rows in the milk parlor. So um, someone start the cows in the morning, bring in the cows, start them, and then at like seven o'clock, then and another relief milker will come in and finish the cows um, to divide it up because it was it was a long milking, like it was you were talking nearly five hours round. Um, in the morning and maybe four in the evening so it was a full there was a full labour unit going to milking cows if you like eight, nine, nine hours a day like um, yeah. so it was just hard it was hard to manage I suppose um, we divided cows into different groups and trying to so they wouldn't weren't going to be standing in yards all day and it was just yeah it was difficult but it was it was enjoyable challenge it was a great challenge and then afterwards then to see like that um, the salads that were produced for 50 salads and the uh, through that year with a young herd of 40 percent uh heifers and also then like to go back and see that it was nine percent empty in 12 weeks like the figures all led up like it was it was it was enjoyable like you know it was, yeah. it was a challenge but it was it was a very 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 rewarding job like you know yeah so then i suppose just to bring you on into the last piece or to the, the current piece we'll say um as you said, you you kind of left Palace Henry earlier than you'd planned. You probably had a kind of a five year plan of staying there, maybe before you take on another opportunity. But like all of these things, when when opportunity knocks, you can't you have to answer the call basically. So just um, explain what's the situation with you uh, on the home farm and the lease farm now, and what's the plan with that? Yeah, so um, put a new uh, an eighteen unit milking parlor on the the new farm. It's um, so it's 40 hectares of a lease farm, uh, 31 in the 31 and a half in the in the one block and and the remainder just slightly over the road. Um plan this year is to um milk 80 cows over there and recede three quarters of the block um and milk 120 cows at home. So 80 and 120 is the split this year. Um and then next year then would be to while I have it all, hopefully I'll receive it by next summer. Um to milk milk 120 cows over and have 120 at home. That'd be the plan going forward. Um, but I suppose going back to just going back to the placements and to where I am now, um, I suppose I would have always seen home as it, before quota, home was 50 cow farm, dairy farm, keeping all the calves, uh, all the cattle to beef um, finishing. And um, I would have always 
before I started in Palace Gennery or the, in the course, the diploma course, I would have always seen this 50 cow farm. And it's only then when I started implementing all the, um, like the grass managing, uh, breeding, um, adapting new technologies that we moved to 70 cows. And the year then we moved 70 cows um, with grass measuring, it was 50 kilos of milk solids in, in the two years. Like it was, uh, and, and about 150 kilos of meal less fed as well. It was worth 18,000 euros to the farm, like a 70 cow farm. So it was by then, then we were able to, I suppose, uh, sit down, assess where we were going forward, uh, made the plan then that I was going to return home farming, but it was going to be for a few years. So I was going down the managing route. So um, obviously, yes, I moved down the managing route for a couple of years and, and this opportunity came up a bit earlier than intended. But I mean, the plan was always there to come home farming. So just that's uh, another point on, on, I suppose, what I gained from the course. And uh, I, like you've you've covered a lot of what's on the on the screen there now. Um, in terms of we'll say Eddie and Coleman as mentors, even Derek is a mentor to you now as well. Um, and, and Martin obviously wouldn't be a million miles away from me at home either. So I'm sure Martin is good for advice as as he always was. Um, like the we'll say moving down to the end of the of the that the, that slide there, the work life balance piece now. Um, so like when you're in the management role. <clears throat> It's you're you were responsible for making sure that people were kind of kept happy and so forth. Um, would you comment on that? And then also from your own perspective, now running your own operation, the fact that you have two milking parlors running, what's what kind of challenges is that going to throw up for you in terms of staffing it and making sure that everyone is happy in terms of like tr we're not all trying to achieve Brendan's goal here basically I'm milking 240 goes and Brendan is is cruising around and everyone else is doing the work in this scenario like um I know there'd be, there'd be no fear of that I know, <laughs> I know that <laughs> but uh I know I suppose yeah back to I suppose in the management role you're making sure yeah that everyone is happy it's like obviously it's going back to having team meetings we we used to in Palace Kenner we had a team meeting every morning um I suppose just a quick Jot through 15 minutes. What happened yesterday? What's the plan for today? Everyone happy? What can we change? Why will you change it? Do you know, uh, we work work together good as a team. Um, obviously, now that I'm home and it's me and dad full time, um, I suppose with setting up the new farm, it is busy now because there's a lot of, I suppose, field work. A lot of jobs, I suppose, that wouldn't happen in yearly on a normal farm that would be set up. So I suppose this year, um, I won't have as much um, paid labour coming into the farm because I'm putting a lot more money into the farm in terms of receding and infrastructure and water and um, uh, to get things going. But I'd be hoping like that uh, when breeding finishes and that now that I'd have um, relief milk for three evenings a week and um, maybe take a weekend a month off. But and, and the same with Dad. But going forward, I suppose, yeah, Dad is young, like um, 56 years of age. Um, he's no intention of stepping back at the moment. Um, he's happy out. And uh, I suppose going forward, um, there will be a full-time person, I suppose, with me and, and, and labour, uh, relief milking. But I suppose the work-life balance you're saying, like um, in terms of using your time wisely, like uh, I always see like if you, if you haven't time to walk to farm, or to pick your bulls, or to do the, I suppose, the, the main things on the farm, your financials will fall down. So if you actually, if you don't have time to walk the farm, if you go off spreading fertilizer or spreading slurry instead of walking the grass and the cows are not in the right grass, like what you would have actually gained from walking your farm, the management of the decisions, would have paid a contractor to spread your fertilizer and your slurry, and you'd actually have finished earlier in the evening, like. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot going on on farms that um, you'd see parents won't allow like sons or daughters milk until six o'clock and even like, and then a problem comes on then at the end of milk and you have to call a vet to a cow and next minute you're still in the air then a quarter past eight at night. You should get back up again then at six o'clock in the morning and you reach burnout. And like when you reach burnout then you're no good to know one either because you won't go and walk the farm or you won't make informed decisions. And I mean, the farm will fall around you. And would it? Um, now you mentioned that the that the New Zealand placement opened your eyes in terms of time management as well. But obviously, Eddie'd be good at time management uh, as well. Um, I wouldn't know Coleman as well. But 
Um, f- would you have learned a, a lot of those skills or honed those skills as well on your placements here? Or was it the New Zealand influence that has really driven you to, to be a better time manager? Well, I suppose in New Zealand with the bigger numbers and smaller amount of labor, it was all contracted out. Like, so that was the first of it that I seen like, whoa, this fella, like he's getting in, someone in to do everything. How is this pain? Like that was my perception of it when I went over there because obviously I hadn't worked on farms at that level. Um, and kind of saying we all along until, up until now, like we would have, we would have spread all our slurry ourselves and all the fertilizer and whatever. But like, that's obviously changed now with the with the open and cow numbers, but yeah, like you just see like that um, when the when the basics are done right, um, and man, time your time is managed and you're finishing on time and evens, things run a lot smoother, um, and you're happier. And everyone that's in working in there is it, the farm is in a better place as well. You're not, cri- you're not crisis management. Yeah, it's, you're not fire brigade. Like it's, yeah, yeah. it's just, you have time to make decisions. And I know, yeah, you come into really busy times of spring and that, but I mean, that's over us now. Like I know I come into breeding, but I mean, you need to be able to step back, take a breeder and actually, where is the farm going? Like um, what happened this week that maybe shouldn't have happened or how can I improve that for next week? And what if you're, constantly running from job to job and running from here to there to do these things and you're not thinking uh, it's I don't it's not going to work like yeah okay and just even the communications piece there like you're you're saying about the contractors coming in and so forth like uh, what would you have learned in terms of the communicating with them like it's not ringing them to tell them the tank is full and it's uh, it needs oh. you need to suck, suck it out oh, it's, it it's having the farm like there was a there was a big learning thing in, in Palace Henry now um, with a major use of contractors have your farm mapped out well um, and have your plan made and wrote down for the week obviously you have to adapt to changes and things pop up in the middle of the week but you know I used to know like that every Thursday I was given the map to the contractor for, for following the cows for fertilizer he gets it over the weekend yeah, and then I'd talk to him then after the weekend and which better he'd done Do you know like I'd colour him in on the, on the map what, where the cows had grazed pretty much from the Thursday previous. Yeah. Um, then just to make sure that there was, it was done, which it was always done. It was, it was an excellent, provided an excellent service. Um, you go then to next week, next Thursday, you do the same again. Uh, you know pretty much that maybe once a month or once every three weeks, you're, you're collecting your tank is going to be full, but we were following the cows anyway, maybe on a weekly or every 10 days basis anyway. Um, so you're just, things get very repetitive when you have a plan in place and yes. when you when you actually write it down, it's going to nearly a daily job in terms of like Thursdays, okay, fertilizer, um, meet the lads in the morning, um, go through well, go through whatever has to be done. Uh, you're maybe saying Fridays, fencing day, um, Mondays for this, Tuesdays for this. Do you know it's, it just gets and it everyone gets into a routine then and things work very well. Like. Okay, very good. Um, and just the, the the structure of it, we'll say from your own perspective there now, um, again, taking your home farm situation, now you're in the position where your dad is, is at home with you there. So obviously you sit down for breakfast and you, you talk about that as well. I suppose what I'm trying to pick out from you here, Brendan, is actually just um, for, for, for people that aren't doing the course, but are running their own farm or whatever, you know, like from what you're saying there, you're advocating that you come in for your breakfast take the 15 or 20 minutes after you've had the breakfast maybe and get out the notebook or get out the diary and write down the few bits and pieces that need to be organized the calls that need to be made put put a structure on your day and that's going to make your day an awful lot more productive Is, am i right in thinking that definitely and put a time put a time scale on it as well because if you just if you just write down what you're going to get done today and there's no time scale on it you can actually get hung up in one job then and you don't get one that's actually more urgent done and it's going to tomorrow and you go home then in the evening you're like you're you're kicking yourself in because there's one job that was very important that didn't done so i mean um allocate what is urgent and important as well that has to be done um and i suppose yeah you just kind of work from there and then obviously get help if you need help okay so don't try and be the king like and do everything yourself and just maybe even on that then brendan i suppose what kind of a, a network of of people 
we'll say, what way are you trying to recruit people? Or we'll say, obviously, at your age, now you have a bunch of friends maybe that might be able to, willing or able to do milking here and there and so forth. But I think it's probably the challenge that we see most is probably people saying they can't get people. Uh, there's two sides to that, I suppose. There's that side that we've just discussed in terms of people don't sit down and think about it properly. Um, so people going away for the Maybank holiday weekend, looking for a milker on the, the Wednesday before the weekend, kind of instead of maybe looking for him now or something like that. Oh, yeah, but, of um, course. But like, yeah, like you back to what you're saying, looking for staff, I suppose. If you're just looking for someone for a Sunday evening milking, like it's not going to work, I don't think. Like, So someone is not just going to give all his Sunday evenings to you because you're giving him one milk. Like they can, it's not going to work. So, um, the best pl- the best way to approach that is obviously hire a uh, relief milker, be flexible with it, and say, look, I have four milkings a week for you there. I need you to do X and X, and you can pick the other two days yourself, whatever whatever suits you. And that seems to work very well. Like, yeah, and in any, uh, in any of the last places that I've worked in, like, um. And they, they feel more valued then. They don't feel that, oh, he's just going to get me now for the for the Sunday evening now. And sure, he's gone off now on the Sunday evening. Sure, I have to wait around now and make his cows. And it's not yeah. worth my while. Do you know? So, yeah. At least he knows. The, the other thing that it's doing then is also it's creating time for, for the farm owner or the farm manager to actually uh, do a bit of thinking about the farm. Yeah. Rather than actually stuck, be stuck in the milking piece, like which yeah, is, which is uh, a very, very important piece. But at the same time, you need to be able to rise up above it and look down from above and see what's yeah. happening. Yeah, and even just if it is, it gives it a chance to revive. Go off and watch a match or go off and do something out of it, a hobby that you like. Um, so there's just not all farming, farming the whole way through. Like, you, you will get burnt out. Like, Yeah, very good. Okay, so just uh, I'll encourage people to throw in a few questions there for Brendan if you have them. Uh, there's one came in, Emma Louise, I suppose. Um, uh, the, we, I suppose we would have anticipated it. Uh, what scrutiny is done on the host farmer to make sure that the student is, isn't a slave to the farm? Yeah, so um, I guess in relation to our particular um, our particular hosts, um, we would have a fairly strong technical criteria as to the type of farm that um, hosts our students. So I, I suppose the first thing is it's a, students are placed on a a farm that is deemed a safe place to work and then we would have technical criteria um i suppose outside of that uh, at the outset the likes of brendan would have signed a contract outlining their hours and their days on and off to work um you know by legislation they can only work 48 hours a week um and the, you know there is a total mix in terms of the the jobs that they are asked to do um and and they are required to do on farm but, you know, the, the, I suppose, days on and off and hours worked, um, I suppose, t- takes that element away in terms of we we don't um, see them as slaves. But I suppose there is communication regularly with, say, myself and the team at Chagas and there are farm visits where, you know, we identify if there are issues. Um, I suppose it, it is not acceptable for students or any staff member on a farm to be to worked as, I suppose, a slave, as, as is um mentioned in the question but um you know if, if that is occurring it's not acceptable and students are removed off of farms okay very good um and just i suppose just to highlight that on that last slide there Emily louise in terms of the closing date for this year's applications um is the 20th of may and uh if anyone is looking for any information they can either email you at emmalouise.coffee at chagas.ie or ring you on 025-42706 uh, and there's also information on the chagas education web page so, um, Brendan, very enlightening to talk to you for a young man. As I said to you at the very start there, I remember meeting you back in maybe 2013 or 2014, and I knew there was there was a little bit of something about you in terms of there was an energy and a buzz about you. Uh, and I met you actually as part of your of your diploma course. I actually did, did a lecture with you as well that time, and I remember you asking lots of questions at that as well. So there was always the, the X factor in you, I suppose, which was great to see. But um, you know, inspiring kind of conversation with you there now, and I'm not, uh, not blo- blo- bluffing you there in that sense. Now, I just think that there's, it's really enlightening to hear what you said there, putting into practice a lot of the stuff that we've spoken about on with Nolly Heffernan and maybe uh, and other people like that in relation to the people management side of things. And it's uh, as I said uh, last night, like on a tweet that I put out, like there's something for everybody to listen to in, in today's conversation because 
whether you do the diploma or whether you don't, uh, that piece of managing people is so, so important in terms of trying to make your firm a better place to work and for yourself and for the people that are coming into it. And just some of the stuff that you said there in terms of trying to take a few minutes out even every day to just plan the day would be so beneficial to people um, to actually having more effective and more productive days as well. So I think it was very, very uh, interesting piece. And I'm very grateful to you for coming on and talking to us. Uh, and Louise, you raised your hand there or you just want to yeah, come in again? Yeah, no, and, 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 and just to echo what you're saying, uh, Stuart, we're giving you a really big head now, Brendan, but, you know, just a really excellent example of somebody who has, you know, spent four years um, with Chagas and really taken advantage of the, the time. Um, and I think it's, it, you know, it's echoed simply in the fact that um, he built a lot of uh, practical and, te- and technical knowledge with his time in Palace Kenry. And then day to day, he implemented that on farm during his two placements um, in the farm management course. And look, Brendan is one of, you know, there's over 140 graduates at this stage. So, you know, there, there are a lot of Brendans um, out there. Um, you know, that practical and, and knowledge, you know, he brought that home and, and you know, over two years, it was 18,000 euro of additional profit to the business, which is no small sum of money. And um, I think then the learnings Brendan has taken from all of the people, uh, the farmers that he's worked with along the way, you know, in terms of working with people, but also the line of communication and, you know, the, the word mentor, um, it can't be underestimated. You know, if Brendan's in a hole, like he mentioned, the drought, I'm sure he was able to fall back on. Uh, Coleman and um, the O'Donnells in that situation to see what were they doing Uh, and also finally then um, his adaptability so you know he had a long-term plan that he was planning on going home a really good opportunity came up less than a mile down the road and so you know they adapted the plan uh, and made it work for them so there's just there's a lot there's a lot to take out of what Brendan is doing I suppose on a final note from from our perspective in Chagas you know, the, the courses that are provided are excellent. Like the, the teaching staff in Chagas are really good. And, you know, we can see that education is linked to greater efficiency on farm, that work-life balance Brendan talks about, and also additional profit. So it, it's very much worthwhile to, um, you know, to, to take out those couple of years. And, um, you know, in the long term, it can be hugely beneficial. Yeah, so I suppose the risk is that people think they do the level five and the level six, and they qualify, obviously, from the point of view of, of uh, stamp duty exemptions, etc. But to actually take that next step and do those two years, even if they were to go straight home after that, it it is going to be of great benefit to them. Um, if I'm if I'm right in assuming that, Brendan, from oh, yeah. if you were if you'd gone straight home, even you would have still got a lot of inf- of knowledge and and uh, learning from the two years of the course alone. Like, I I would like I mean, sure I probably would have upskilled or whatever, but I mean the course doing the course has really allowed me to, I suppose, assess uh, opportunities, realise the full potential of the farm. Um, I mean, you're, you're getting lectured from the best in the country as well, George Ranswadham, like um, Lauren Shalhou, all the people in Moorpark as well, like return on investment, return on equity, all the figures that you can do. It takes the guesswork out of if a farm comes up beside you, if that's what you're doing. Um, that you can jot down all your figures. Yes, it makes sense. You go and you do it. You want to do it. It takes the guesswork out of it, I suppose. And I suppose that's that's how I've really got to doing what I've done today. Very uh, good. Yeah. So, Brendan, we'll be back in, to talk to you in a couple of years' time to see how you're getting on with the new farm when you've it all up and running, okay? Lovely, thanks. Thanks, thanks, for, for, thanks for coming on today and thanks to Emma Louise as well for organising it all with you. Um, and we'll be back next week to talk about uh, protein levels in, in diets for the, the summer, spring or for the summer grazing. Um, wish you all well for the coming week. It looks like it's going to be a good week. So happy farming and most of all, safe farming. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you. Thanks. thanks. I know.